PhD medication shortage. It's affecting millions of lives. How can there be a shortage of medication? Something that has been made for decades. Where did it go? And why are all the news articles blaming TikTok? I'll give you two guesses. Think about it like this. You run out of snoozes on the alarm clock. You roll your ass out of bed, ready to tackle the day. You reach for your glasses, but they aren't where you left them. They're gone. They ain't ever coming back. They went out to get milk and cigarettes and you'll never see them again. You went out for a pack of cigarettes and never came back. Everything is blurry, unfocused. You can order some new glasses if you can find your way to the optometrist. It'll be tough because you can't see anymore. You can't read your phone, so ordering an Uber to take you there will be really difficult. If only you'd enabled the voice assistant on your phone, but you didn't because it's annoying as fuck. Eventually, you die from exhaustion because not having your glasses just makes you super tired. It's my reality. All right, sorry, yeah, a bit weird, dramatic, eh, whatever. But basically, that's not what having ADHD meds is like. This tool that you've been using to help you navigate your life each and every day is suddenly unavailable indefinitely. It's stressful and it can impact you in so many ways. So let's explore why there's this medication shortage and whether TikTok of all things has contributed to this more than we might realize. To offer a bit of context, there's this idea that ADHD is trendy now and TikTok is the reason uh, so many people think they have ADHD. And this all started in 2020 when people were confined to their homes due to the various lockdowns around the world due to the COVID pandemic. Holy fuck. That was three years ago. <laughs> That's really well to think about. Like, three years ago, the Fire Nation attacked. So many people had to work from home after years of commuting to and from an office. Others were stuck inside trying to homeschool their herd of children. People that had previously had really big work schedules and, you know, maybe even bigger social lives now had too much time on their hands and no structure. Their ability to start or complete work is becoming harder and harder. All the things they enjoy at home were available to them now all hours of the day. People had more freedom than they were used to in their working schedules. No boss looking over their shoulder every 30 minutes. TikTok booms as a platform with a perfectly targeted algorithm. Anyone and everyone starts seeing small snippets of things that may grab their attention. ADHD starts appearing. The people relate to it. The algorithm has you figured out and suddenly you're questioning every aspect of your life. People are alone with their thoughts, working in an environment designed around comfort and relaxing uh, with all of this new insight into themselves. TikTok trends run like wildfire. We are locked down, mental health spiraling out of control, the world is unstable and resources become overloaded. Oprah's like, you get ADHD and you get ADHD and it's like a whole thing. So with an overloaded mental health system and a spike in diagnosis, this creates a supply and demand issue for treatment. Adderall is one of the most commonly used treatments, especially in the US. And towards the end of 2022 and early 23, there was a major shortage of this stimulant. This was for a mixture of reasons. Spike in diagnosis, shortage in manufacturing resources and laborers. With no immediate end in sight for this shortage, doctors switched many people to other treatment options where it was applicable, Vyvanse being one of the top contenders. Now, unfortunately for many, this has had a domino effect on Vyvanse as well, and this sucks for a bunch of reasons. First and most selfishly, I am on Vyvanse, and so are so many of my ADHD friends. I have a video where I discuss my own experience with Vyvanse here, here or here, if you want to check it out. We also live in a country that has more limited treatment options. Adderall isn't legal in Australia, so there's less alternatives for us to move to when one becomes short. Taking the personal stuff out of it, though, is the consideration for Vyvanse's patent ending. So here's a quick rundown on this. A drug patent is a legal right that is granted by the US Patent and Trademark Office to the inventor or holder of a drug. It allows them to have complete control over the drug's formulation, branding, production details, all of it. Patents have an expiration date. They will typically have a length of 20 years, but this can obviously vary, as it did with Vyvanse. In 2005, an application filed as NRP 104 was the patent application for Vyvanse. It was filed by a Shire PLC. PLC should have, fuck, it was fired. It was filed by Shire PLC and their collaborative partner, New River Pharmaceuticals. Shire would later be acquired by Takeda Pharmaceuticals in 2019. The FDA approved Vyvanse for treating ADHD in children on Feb 26, 2007. It was approved for adults later in 2008 and adolescents in 2010. It was deemed as safe for long-term treatment in adults in 2012. It was also later approved for the treatment of binge eating disorder on Jan 30th, 2015. Now, the official patent expired on February 24th, 2023, but 
and like a medium sized butt, not a small, not a large, but you know, medium sized butt. But, but regardless of the size of the butt, there can also be exclusivity periods, which is granted by the FDA. Essentially, with these different exclusivities, the patent length can be extended anywhere from six months to seven years. There are a bunch of different types of exclusivities that can be granted, but we're just going to talk about the relevant one to today's video, the pediatric exclusivity period. This is where the FDA grants the original manufacturer an additional six months of market exclusivity. Now, as we know, pharmaceutical companies are in it for the money, not for their love of helping people and improving lives. Aww. So this pediatric exclusivity is supposed to be used to confirm that their drugs are safe and effective for children through um, another range of clinical trials. Now, seeing as they were approved for children before any other age group is a pretty clear indication that Takeda is doing this to increase their profits before their reigning monopoly of Vyvanse comes to an end. August 24th, 2023 rolls around and the pediatric exclusivity period ends. The market for generics is now open. We are stuck in a limbo period while we wait for generic versions of Vyvanse to be granted approval by the FDA and other countries uh, governing drug agencies, but hopefully making treatment cheaper for everyone who needs it down the line. So the spike in TikTok awareness, which segued into like an increase in diagnosis, coupled with an Adderall and Vyvanse shortage was like a convergence of like all the right things that like led to this absolute shit storm for ADHDers and other conditions that these medications uh, use for treatment, right? Takeda blames the shortage on two things, an increase in demand and manufacturing delays. Now, I usually hate researching, so I hope you continue to appreciate the hours spent trying to find accurate information on this. And before I get into that, I also need to thank Sydney Rubio for her amazingly well-written and researched article she wrote for the website Inflow on this topic. It became a really solid reference point for me and um, this video. So I'll leave the links in the description below if you want to check out her work with Inflow. So from what I could find, the DEA comply complies. They don't. What do they comply with? They they are the Drug Enforcement Agency. From what I could find, the DEA controls the amount of supplies of raw materials that manufacturers can obtain. Now this is due to the nature of stimulants being a controlled substance that can easily be abused. Special thanks to the 80s for giving stimulants such a bad rap. Now I can only speculate here, but I believe the DEA typically relies on like decades worth of historical data to determine its distribution quotas, right? So the recent surge and spike in ADHD diagnosis from the last three years has likely not had a substantial impact on like the long-term historical average, which is where I think a lot of the shortage has stemmed from. More people require a drug that is limited to like previous years worth of manufacturing production. It's similar to how like pre-COVID, it used to be easier to get Taylor Swift tickets, and now getting tickets to an Aeros tour is like a bigger deal than most other accomplishments that we have in our life, you know? So I'm also not sure if the opening up to generics meant the regulations changed or meant that there was less of the raw ingredients to go to Takeda while the generics were still being developed before they were approved. But I'm sure there is something there. It's, it's a controlled substance and government agencies like to feel important, you know? They need a little pat on the back sometimes, a little gold star, just like the rest of us do. You know, it's just their decisions impact our lives and most of us just work like average jobs, you know. I don't know. The whole thing has kind of been building up to this like giant shit show. Luckily, it feels like we are at the tail end of it now or getting there. Apparently, there's been 11 different drug makers that have been approved for their generic versions of Vyvanse and they are working with the FDA and the DEA to ensure they can obtain more ingredients to alleviate the pressure on the growing demands for ADHD treatment. I also should mention that if you aren't in the US, the patent laws and timeframes are likely different depending on your governing agencies. I asked my GP when we could start seeing generics rolled out here in Australia and he was unsure, as were all the pharmacists that I've asked, just like out of genuine curiosity. As we navigate the hopeful end of this shortage, it is a pretty stark reminder that our healthcare systems need a lot of work in adapting to changing circumstances. So while we're wishfully hoping that things will change, it is a good time to explore all of the other tools that are available to you leaning on them more heavily where you can. I know this is difficult without meds, but the resources are there to be used however you can. I feel like this has been a pretty crappy reminder for many that meds shouldn't be the entire solution to your ADHD treatment, and I'm not excusing the battle so many are on right now. But if we have more coping tools in place, then if one of those tools goes missing, we can rely on the others while we wait for it to come back, you know? While I'm fortunate to still have access to my dosage, I have been trying a lot harder to implement other things in my life that help me further, knowing that my med dosage could not be available any day now. 
One of the things that's been helping me is I've been joining in on online Pomodoro sessions, uh, like body doubling sessions to help me stay on track when doing work. Um, I've even started hosting some of these on a live stream on YouTube when I really need to concentrate. Um, if you want to join in on them, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on them in future. Utilizing other tools your healthcare professional may provide, this is the time to give it a go. If you aren't already, you know, try using different timers and alarms. On days where I feel particularly bad with executive function, I will ask my Google Nest Hub to set an alarm for 10 or 20 minutes just so I can check in with myself to make sure that I'm still on task. Or at the very least, be a disturbance in case I actually got distracted in a doom scroll. Anyway, um, it's time to wrap this video up. I appreciate you all. I hope you're doing okay. I will see you in the next one. Keep on keeping on. That was a dumb sign off, but um, it'll probably make the end cut. Yeah. See you guys.